Good day, everyone. Today we are talking about section 10.5, rational expressions. You can simplify rational expressions with monomial, binomial, or trinomial denominators, and I can multiply and divide rational expressions. So we're going to talk about monomials, then binomials, then trinomials. So whenever we have a monomial expression, it's literally using quotient property with variables and using just reducing fractions. So in this case, like r over r cancels to be 1 over 1. So in this case, we get 1 half. Again, numbers, so 63 over 18. Again, you can use your calculator. Go alpha y equals, reduce 63 over 18, becomes 7 over 2. Nothing to move the y, so the y stays put. For 4 over 12 reduces to be 1 third. 8 to the third over 8 to the sixth quotient property. 6 minus 3 would be 3 in the denominator. If your values are in the denominator, you always have some type of numerator. In this case, it is 1. If you cancel everything out, your numerator is still 1. When you are dealing with binomials, again, binomial is a prefix meaning two, you need to have identical, so identical binomials to cancel. Identical would be like C plus 2 and C plus 2. C plus 2, C minus 2 are not identical. They need, need to be identical. If they're not identical, they don't. One way to avoid making some mistakes that people do, and I recommend, is whenever you have a binomial, put parentheses around it. Now, these are not identical matching binomials, but what could you do? Well, we could factor the numerator. We could factor out the GCF, which in this case is 2. So I'm going to take 2 and factor out 2 from both of those. So when I take 2 out, I'm left with u minus 3. The denominator does not have a GCF. It's just 1. Now, both the numerator and denominator have a u minus 3. Those cancel each other out, and we're left with just 2. You could say 2 over 1, but realistically it is just 2. Not both parts have to be binomials. You could have a monomial and a binomial. Again, monomials only will cancel out monomials. Binomials will only cancel out binomials. So nothing we can do with the numerator, but... We always look for, do we have a GCF that we can factor out of the denominator? In this case, yes, x plus 5. When I go to simplify, essentially I am covering up this x plus 5. That's going to stay there no matter what. We're going to have x plus 5 in our final answer simply because there's no other x plus 5s to cancel it. If I look outside of that, I have monomials. 6 over 6 cancels to be 1 over 1, so I'm left with x in the numerator, x plus 5 in the denominator. Do I need the parentheses? No. I could write this as x over x plus 5. The only problem with that, I find, and is that some people want to do this. Well, there's an x on top and bottom. That is a major no. Do not do that. Monomials, one-termers, like the top here is a monomial, can only cancel out other monomials. Binomials can only be canceled by other binomials. So anything of this x plus 5 can only be canceled by another matching x plus 5. All right, I'd like you to pause the video and try the last one on your own. All right, so on the top, we factored out our GCF of 4y squared, and we were left with 2y squared minus 3. In the denominator, we factored out our GCF of 6y, we're left with 2y plus 3. 2y squared and 
minus 3 and 2y plus 3 are not identical. So they look very similar, but they're not identical. So they're going to stay put. Outside, 4 over 6 reduces to be 2 thirds. If we have y to the second in the numerator, y to the first, 2 minus 1 is 1 in the numerator because the larger value was in the numerator to start. All right, moving on. When we start dealing with trinomials, this is where factoring is coming back. What we need to do is factor first. And once we've factored and you have it down to binomials, then we can cancel out matching binomials. If you want to do your diamond on top, you can do your diamond on top. If you want to do it, some people like to put their diamond beside. They'll go like this and put their diamond. And then they'll put their other diamond. Let me switch colors here. They'll do their diamond for the bottom one. And then they'll go like this and they go equals. Up top we get x plus 2 times x plus 1. Again, the order doesn't matter. On the bottom we had x plus 2, x minus 3. So I'm going to stick to giving you ones that are diamond done for the factoring part. So again, if you want to do it beside, if you want to do the diamond, you want to take this diamond and you want to move it. and move the whole diamond, put it underneath. You want to put the diamond out front. I don't quite frankly care where you do your diamond. You just need to show your diamond anytime you have a trinomial. Once you have factored that trinomial, then you can go and go, do I have any matching binomials? Well, yeah, I have an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. Those cancel. x plus 1, x minus 3 doesn't cancel, so that means that is left to be our final answer. So if, in other words, if I took x squared plus 3x plus 2 and divided by x squared minus x minus 6, I would be left with x plus 1 over x minus 3. That's what it simplifies to be. A reminder when we get to this one, because we have a difference of squares, you have a squared minus b squared is a plus b a minus b. Some of us struggled with this back in chapter 6. So I would say that this is x squared minus 4 squared, and that's how I'm going to get x plus 4, x minus 4. Oh, I don't need that. All right, the bottom I'm going to do a diamond. It's a trinomial, so I got 8, negative 6, so I get negative 2 and negative 4. x minus 2, x minus 4. Again, I do not need to write my matching ones on top of each other. It just happened to work out. They can still cancel out even if they're not directly one on top of the other. So we get x plus 4 over x minus 2. This would be our final answer. I'd like you to pause the video and try the next one on your own. All right, so the bottom we had a difference of squares. x squared minus 3 squared becomes x plus 3, x minus 3. Up top, this was already factored, and we just had x plus 3. We had that binomial, x plus 3 is canceled. We have x minus 3. How do you show that the x minus 3 is in the denominator? Well, when we cancel these out, we're really saying that these cancel out to become 1 over 1. So our final answer in this case is 1 over x minus 3. Moving on, once we get past simplifying, we're going to talk about multiplying, which really, multiplying, there are a couple different ways to think about this, but one of them that you can do is to simply multiply everything and make one big fraction and then reduce. So you could take... 16 times 35 and get 560. And you can take 21 times 12 and get 252 and reduce that to get 9 over 20. Another way you could do this is if you have your 21 over 16 times 12 over 35 
is to look, do you have some reduction pairs? Again, this fraction bar, you can extend it and say, is really the top, the top numbers and the bottom numbers being multiplied? Well, I recognize 21 and 35 that they're both divisible by 7, so this becomes 3 over 5. 12 and 16, well, they're both divisible by 4, and I get 3 over 4. Multiply the numerators, and I get 9. Multiply the denominators, I get 20. So you can multiply to make one fraction and then reduce. You can reduce the fraction pieces and then reduce. And it really depends. Like on this one here, I would multiply because I'm dealing with smaller numbers. I would just go like this and multiply the top and bottom and say 2x to the 4th times 6x is 12x to the 5th. 5x squared times 3x would be 15x to the 5th. And now I'm going to reduce. Well, x to the 5th over x to the 5th cancels. 12 over 5 the most divisible by 3, I get 4 over 5. And that would be my answer. Something like this is, again, multiplying is really a big fraction that we're going to say times. And so whenever we have binomials, we're going to put those in parentheses because we have to factor out the GCF. Whenever we have trinomials, we need to do a diamond. So I'm going to do a diamond here, and I got 4 and negative 5. So we get x minus 1, x minus 4. I'm going to do this one. The GCF is 2 times x minus 4. So I'm going to add that to my numerator as well. Down here, my GCF is 3x, and we're left with x minus 4, so we're going to go 3x, x minus 4, and then my last piece here, negative 7 and 6, would be 7 minus 1, so I get x plus 7, x minus 1. So all I've done so far is I factored each of the four parts, and then I wrote their factored parts as one big fraction, and now I'm going to see, do I have anything that cancels? Well, I'm looking here. I have an x minus 1 in the numerator and the denominator, so those cancel. I have an x minus 4, numerator, denominator. Those cancel. Now note, 1 cancels 1. I can't cancel both of the x minus 4s in the numerator. I can only cancel out 1 because there's only 1 in the denominator. If there were two x minus 4s in the denominator, I could cancel out two x minus 4s in the numerator. After I cannot cancel anymore, I rewrite what's left. So I had 2 times x minus 4 in the numerator, and I have 3x times x plus 7 left in the denominator. I double check I, that nothing cancels. 2 over 3 doesn't reduce. I don't have any other outside x's. My binomials are different. That is my answer. And no, I do not need to multiply that out. Whatever I get there is perfectly fine. The last thing we're going to talk about is dividing. Divul dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So in other words, we're going to flip the second fraction. So you can just simply cross it off, go like this, cross the fraction off, and make this times 35 over 16. And again, I can multiply it just like we did above. We can multiply and make one big fraction. We can do the reducing beforehand. However you choose to do this, you would get 21 over 10. So again, I could take out 5 there. I can take out 8 here and have 3 times 7 over 5 times 2. Same thing. If Even if I have an expression, I'm going to cross this out and rewrite it. 25x squared over 6. Change the division to multiplication. Again, you can make it one big one and then reduce, you can reduce the parts. I would like you to pause the video and try each of the next three. Again, when you're doing these 
bigger ones here take and you can cross out the second fraction and rewrite it and then change the division to times you'll notice i do one thing that's i will start the factoring and rewrite it in factored form but you don't have to do that you're not quite there yet so i'd like you to pause the video and try each of these three on your own all right, so on this one, I multiplied the 24 and 25 x squared to get 600 x squared. I multiplied the two denominators to get 30 x to the third, reduced it to get 20 over x. All right, on the two big ones. Again, I factored each part in a different color. So you can see like the top left here, I factored in black and then wrote the factor pairs in black. Um, same thing with blue, purple, green and so on and so forth. Again, I crossed out, whether you just do an X, you wanna color them out completely, cross them out, rewrite them. You notice in the notes, I'll just draw arrows going like this, showing they flip flop. You do you for multiplying or taking, dividing into multiplying. Again, when you have matching binomial pairs, they cancel, so the X plus fives canceled, one in the numerator cancels, one in the denominator. And then you write whatever is left is what you write in your final answer. And so you can see both of the problems done here. Very similar type problems. Um, if everything happens to cancel, either in the numerator or denominator, that is left as one. I will tell you that is very rare that that happens. If you have questions on this, come to class ready to ask. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.